My son is listening to Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to see if we're in the group. Okay, I yeah, think we're in business. Okay. It's about yeah. it's preparing the live. Let's see. I think I can. Hey, 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 and welcome back. We are back with another self care Saturday. Listen, y'all, <laughs> we had a little technical difficulties, but we are here. And we are ready to serve you ladies up. We want to thank you so much for your patience um, and waiting for us. I am Jennifer Brown, the Empowerment Director for the Tulsa Chapter for the Phenomenal Woman Empowerment Network here in Tulsa. And I have my lovely phenoms with me. Don't have all my crew today, but I have some of my crew. And I would like for you ladies to introduce yourselves. Yeah, I'll go ahead first real quick. Hey, everybody, I'm Yolanda Gilliam. I am actually the um, Empowerment Director here in Phoenix, Arizona. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm in the, <clears throat> ah, pardon me, sorry about that. I am actually in the Phoenix location here, so I'm the director here. I welcome on and let's just go ahead and I'm gonna turn it over to Bree. Yes, hello everybody, I'm Brianna Graham, AKA Coach Bree. I'm the VP1 Ambassador for the Tulsa chapter and just all the way together. I support everybody and everything that they're doing in P1. Um, and I'm also a entrepreneur coach. So that's always fun. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Jen because I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited for today. Yes. <laughs> yes. So once again, I want to say thank you ladies for your patience as we were getting started. We're going to go ahead and jump right in and introduce our speaker. She has an amazing topic that is um, that she has prepared for you ladies today and Bree is going to introduce her. Yes, I get the privilege of introducing my one of my best friends, one of my sisters. I was going to drink out of our mug that we um, that we have and our and our um, our bodies are on it <laughs> because we walk through life together and it's adorable. But I was like, I need a bigger mug for today. Um, but Juanita, again, she's one of my closest friends. Um, Juanita Espinosa is a certified life coach and she helps women master their morning routines. She is passionate about seeing women step into their God-given purpose and walk out their calling. Juanita resides in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma with her husband, Casey, of 16 years and her five beautiful children. We have Alyssa, Michael, Ariah, Elijah, and JL. <laughs> and our kids are like, our older kids are close in age. So get ready, Phenoms, for another great topic. Master your morning for massive success. Please welcome my most favorite, one of my most favorite people, Juanita Espinosa. Woo woo! 
<laughs> Brie, you did like this massive introduction. I was not expecting that at all. And I think it's funny that you actually put JL as the youngest because everybody does that, but she's not. Elijah's um, the youngest. In my head, I put JL like before Elijah, but you know. <laughs> Even Elijah says she's the baby. So <laughs> that's how it is. But thank you so much. I'm so excited to share this topic with you guys because it literally transformed my life, like above and beyond, not just in business, but in personal and in everything. And now I implement it even with my children, like my children practice this every morning. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Do you mind if I go ahead and share my screen now? Okay. Let me just pull it up. Just one minute here. Okay. Okay. Can you guys see that? Okay. Okay, so today we are going to talk about a topic that I'm so, so passionate about, and it is about mastering your morning um, and creating a morning routine routine to fulfill your cup first before you go out in your days and start pouring into others. And so this is such a huge topic because we don't necessarily have this dedicated routine that we think we do. And so we're going to go over some of the things that I've done and how you can actually have this self-care routine every morning. Okay, so you are actually in the right place if you're ready to master your morning routine for massive success. So success looks different to everybody, whether it's success in your marriage, in relationships with your children, in business, ministry, organization, whether if it's uh, balancing work and home life. I mean, there's just so many different areas that success can look like for you, and that's going to be tailored to the season of life that you're in as well. So about me. So first and foremost, I am a wife to my husband of 16 years, like Bree said, um, and we have five children and one grandbaby on the way. Um, I was a holistic health coach for 15 years. And then about a year ago, I transitioned to being a life purpose coach. So just a little bit about my favorite things is I love fall. I love everything about fall weather, um, sweaters, soups, clothes, but my most favorite thing is the togetherness with friends and family. It just seems like this time of year, we tend to get together more and want to be around each other more. And I love having those get togethers with people. So today, what we're going to discuss, we're going to actually talk about the savers routine, um, what it will do for your life, how it transformed my life. I'm going to share a little bit of my story and then how it relates to self-care and then some things you guys can actually start doing today to implement it. So you don't have to have the whole package. There's things you can start doing today that are literally going to transform your life or the next couple of weeks. So first, what is saver? So I actually have my book right here. And so about a year ago, um, I started reading this book and this is what it stands for. Savers is written by, The Miracle Morning is written by Hal Elrond. And he wrote it because he found in a morning routine, it transformed his life. And he started sharing it with other people, what he was doing. And then their lives were transforming as well. And so that's actually how the book was written. He was actually doing it like for a couple of years until he decides to actually write the book. So there's six different steps in the savers. It's silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and then scripting or journaling. And so you actually complete all of these every single day um, within an hour time frame. So with the exception of exercise, sometimes it might be a little bit longer depending on what your exercise is, but you can actually do all of these in within a 20 to 30 minute time frame if you're a little bit short on time. So um, I, in the book, he says this quote, how you do anything is how you do everything. And when I first heard this, I kind of was taken back. I was like, oh my gosh, like I did like an evaluation. And I started thinking, I said, that can't be true. Like, because I'm really good at doing X, Y, Z. I just struggle a little bit with X, Y, Z. And then I started thinking a little bit more, like really taking inventory, like, okay, what does my morning routine look like? And I started thinking about it and I was like, well, yeah, I don't I'll, at this time in my life, like I would wake up sometimes between nine and 10 AM. I would go to bed between two and 3 um, AM. Um, my kids were homeschooled. My husband worked. Um, I always had businesses at home. So 
I really was able to have that flexibility to where I didn't have to because I worked so much late in the night. So I was like, it's not that big of a deal. And then I started noticing that because I was delaying myself waking up, I was also delaying in other areas of my life. I was delaying in um, finishing projects, um, whether they were home projects, whether they were business projects. I was delaying um, not uh because I wasn't waking up delaying in getting other things done. And so I would always say, okay, I could do that later. I could do that later because what was happening is I was delaying in my morning routine. So it really does faucet into everything that we do that what you, how you do anything is how you do everything. And when I heard this quote, it impacted me so much. I actually made it my screensaver. <laughs> So that way, every time I got on my phone, I would remember like, okay, what are you doing on your phone? Is this intentional and purposeful? So here is the basics of a miracle morning. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to wake up, you're going to brush your teeth, and you're going to drink eight ounces of water. And you are going to do this as soon as you wake up. And then um, there's two options with the miracle morning routine. So one is you can either exercise and then complete the other five stages or the other five steps, or you can do the five steps and then go exercise later. Here is what we do. So when we wake, when I wake up in the morning, we get up out of bed, we brush our teeth, I drink water and we go and take our dogs for a walk. I do not get on my phone. I do not check social media. I do not check emails. I don't check text messages, nothing. Because how you start your day, if you have a text message or you got a message in the middle of the night or a client wrote you or a friend is writing you about something that's going on with their life, it is gonna literally dictate the rest of your day. So you have to make sure you are dedicated that, to that time in the morning to where you don't check any of that. So what we do is we get up. I already have a podcast ready to go the night before on what I'm going to listen to, or if I'm going to listen to music the next morning. And so as I go, we go to walk our dogs. We have the same path. We go every morning and it takes us between 20 and 25 minutes to go on this path. We go walk our dogs, we come back and then we get it in the shower in his book. This was so important to me. He said, you have to earn your shower. You don't get to just jump into the shower earn your shower. So go and do some exercise, get your body moving when you start your day, even if it's just walking. The other thing um, he says is that um, you have to be careful not to over exercise in the morning because it can mentally drain you if you overwork your body. And then you're going to have a hard time throughout the day because the mental capacity has already been taken from you. So you want to make sure when you do this, that you are working out, you're getting your exercise, but know what your limits are to not completely drain you. If you want to, if you're like somebody like, I want to go work out for two, two and a half hours. You want to set that time up for the afternoon or the evening, like where you don't have to make as many decisions in the afternoon and the evening, because you're going to be most productive those first few hours of your day. So you can do that two ways. You can go for your exercise in the morning, or you could do it later. But if you choose to do it later, make sure you do those other five steps still. And so those other five steps, it's going to be silence. So you're going to want to sit in silence for five to 10 minutes or meditation. You can take a shower after you, if you decide to go for a walk and come back, you come home and um, sit in silence for five to 10 minutes, or you could do it before you go. I always feel better doing it after I come back because I feel like I have a little bit more, i like my body's a little bit more awake. And so um, I will sit in silence for about five to 10 minutes in doing meditations. And then um, I also do not, for silence in your meditation space, do not have it in your bedroom. It's too easy and too comfortable to slide right back into bed or to lay on your bed. And so if you have a, even if you have a dedicated space in your bedroom, away from your bed, he says that it's best to do that so that way you don't have that temptation. So I actually have a little bit of space in my living room. And then um, in our bedroom, we have a bedroom office. And so um, we have like an office attached to our bedroom. And so we have that office space also. So if nobody's up, just me and my husband, I'll usually come in the living room. If our kids are up and we need more space, we'll go in the office and they'll go in there with us. Um, I'm actually going to focus on two of these specifically. They're going to be the affirmations and scripting and journaling. And so, um, but I wanted to let you guys know about the silence aspect. Um, affirmations, affirmations create and set the tone for the day and before you go to bed. 
um, visualization. So this is what, this is the time when you think and dream of what you want your daily life to look like. So you can tell your silence and your visualizations after you're meditating, I want you to sit there and just think like not future, future, like when you are like 40 years old and you want the house and the car and traveling or however your life looks, think a day-to-day -day basis. Like what does your life look like? How are your relationships? How are um, relationships with your spouse and your children? What does a typical day look like? Are, is your home organized? Is, does it run and function properly and in order or is there chaos? Um, if you have a job, what does that look like? Are you advancing in that job? Or if you have a business or a dream for a business, how are you going to achieve that? What does that business even look like? Who's there in that business? So this is like the, this is one of my kids' favorite things to sit down and we visualize. And then when they have something, they're really like a goal they're working to, they'll sit there and they will visualize them actually doing it. So my son, when he wanted a drum set and he was taking drum lessons and he was really praying and really wanting this drum set, he would literally lay in bed, look at a spot in his room and visualize himself playing those drums. He did not tell us this. And then in August, when it was, this was a couple of years ago in August, um, I just had it on my heart. I was like, we got to buy him a drum set. We found a drum set and we bought it within a couple of days. It was like one of the best drum sets you could get for a really good price. And we brought it home. And he told us afterwards for three months, he sat there visualizing himself playing those drums. And now he's like, he's a great drum player. Like he's amazing at it. So visualization really does help. It helps you step into those, those positions and take those steps to achieve it. Exercise, like I said, earn your shower. You could do some really small exercises, even in your home. You don't have to go to the gym if it's too cold where you live, because it, it temperatures are starting to cool down a little bit. Um, you can even do some stuff in your home. Like I would do some yoga um, in the cooler months. I would do yoga. I would also do like jumping jacks, um, on demand videos. You could do YouTube, whatever exercise you're going to do, just set it aside and have it already ready to go the night before. So when you get up, it's already ready and you're not searching for something like for 20, 30 minutes. And then you feel like this is like wasting your time. Have it ready the night before. Know what you're going to do for your exercise the night before. Um, one of my favorite exercises to do, because you really just want to get the blood flowing is what the purpose of it is, is doing like some jumping jacks and some burpees. <laughs> Like if that doesn't get your blood flowing, I don't know what will, because you are literally jumping up and down and your body's warming up and you're ready to go. Um, reading, um, Bible or personal development. So you could kind of see how the silence meditations, the affirmations, the visualization and the reading and the journaling all can go together so quickly. So reading, you want to take at least 10 to 15 minutes in your morning to read something positive. Don't read the news. Don't read something that's going to be negative. Don't read something um, or listen to something that's going, that's talking doubt. You want something positive, something that's going to make you better. And so I personally like to read um, my Bible in the morning. And then I also read um, personal development books. So if I don't read them, I am listening to them on Audible while I'm getting ready or while I'm on my walk, because that also helps encourage me for my day. And it helps set that tone and the intention for the day. And then the last part of the miracle morning is called scripting or journaling. And so what I usually do is I have me and my kids and we'll write out kind of like gratitude for the day or um, setting a tone for the day. And so um, one of my, one of the, I'll give you guys an example. So earlier this week um, we went on a walk and I was just listening to an audiobook while we were walking and um, immediately I felt in my spirit, I said, he said, do not settle. And I was like, settle. And I was like, he said, do not settle. Do let anybody around you settle in settle in relationships, settle in business, settle in anything, because when you settle, that creates a foundation. And so I started looking at everything in my life as far as my health business, home and Bible school and looking, seeing 
where can I go up from, from either lower mediocre to excellence? Like, where do I need to get better? Where do I need to put more focus and attention to? Where do I need to put more discipline to? And then I, and that was during my journaling time. And so I wrote a whole thing out about settling and talking to our children about settling. And it was so cool because literally the next day in Bible school, they were talking about living a life of excellence. And so I got all of this before it was like a precursor to before I got this message at Bible school. Okay, so let's talk about hitting the snooze button. I want you to just think about this for a minute. How many people actually hit that snooze button? Like if you hit that snooze button, I want you to tell me, like, say something like, yep, I've hit that snooze button. So here's what it I does to your, <laughs> here's what it does to your body and mind. When you hit that snooze button, it actually tells your brain that life is not worth get, getting up for. And it creates a pattern and a pathway in the brain that you don't want to get up. And then you're going to start dreading things that you have to do on a daily basis. So you hit that snooze button and then the next day it may be like, I really don't want to go to the store. I don't want to get groceries. And then the, later after weeks of doing this over and over again, next thing you know, you're like, oh my gosh, we have no food. You're eating out. You're not eating the healthy foods that you had wanted to do. You're not meal planning all because you started this, this neural pathway of hitting the snooze button. The other thing that it does is you begin to operate under the law of resistance. So there are spiritual laws, there are natural laws, and there are universal laws in, that we all operate under. And the law of resistance is the law of resistance that which you resist, you draw to and you will perpetuate its influence upon your life. So anytime you do have any kind of resistance, it actually magnifies because your focus is on that. And so instead of focusing on what you don't want to do, you have to focus on what you do want to do. Otherwise, that's going to start magnifying more. So then you start living in that dread or in that like, you know, just that same pattern, like, I really don't want to do this. Um, I really don't feel like doing this. And so when you start focusing on those things that you do want to do, you'll notice the things you didn't want to do before, they just become easy tasks. They're like, oh, why? And then you start thinking, you're like, why was I even doubting this? Like, why did I do that? But it all started with that snooze button. And so you want to make sure to not hit that snooze button. And that's why we're going to talk about affirmations. So affirmations are phrases or statements that you speak over your life or your situation, your body, whatever is going on in your life. So there are three different categories that I like to categorize affirmations in. There's bedtime affirmations, morning affirmations, and then situational affirmations. So bedtime affirmations is something that you say before you go to bed. Um, here, I gave an example here. I'm going to sleep with ease and I will wake up with energy, excitement, and ready to conquer my day. So that's something that we say at night. Um, I have different ones with my children. My husband has his own affirmation at night. And then in the morning time, um, I usually ask for a uh, word as soon as I wake up to what's going to be my tone for the day. And so uh, depending on what that tone is. And so like right here, um, this is the affirmation from the other day. I will not settle today in my, um, I will not settle today in my growth, my business or in relationships. The love of God flows out from me in abundance and it packs everyone I am around today. And so th that's just an example of an affirmation you get in the morning. There's so many different ways you could do affirmations for the morning. You don't want them super long. You want to kind of keep them short. And then you want to remind yourself of them throughout the day. And then a situational one would be health. Today, my body is going to be full of energy and vitality. My body operates in perfection. Now, there may be things like in your body, like I have knee pain or I have joint pain or I suffer with migraines or I'm trying to lose weight or be healthy. And those are facts that are real. But the truth is your body does not have to operate in that way. And therefore, when you start speaking that, your body automatically starts to align with those words that you're speaking over it. And so you're probably asking, well, why does she start with bedtime and not morning? Hmm, that's a great question. So the amount of sleep you get is not determined, is determined by the way you wake up. So I have a misprint in there. It's not determined by how many hours of sleep you get. So 
there was a study done and it was what it was showing was that it didn't matter. So there's a couple factors. One is depends on the person. It depends on their lifestyle, depends on age and depends on uh, their physical health of their body. So those are all different factors that could come into play. But what he, Hal Elrod, the person that wrote the book, The Miracle Morning, he did the study because he found when he had a positive affirmation at night, his morning actually was more positive than it was before. He woke up more energized. He woke up ready to go. So he started doing the study with groups of people. And first he started off with just like 10, 20 people. And he was like, okay, I just want you to do affirmations at night and let's see how you wake up. And so it didn't matter how many hours of sleep. Some people got only four hours of sleep. Some people got seven hours of sleep. Some people got eight hours of sleep. And it didn't matter how many hours of sleep they got. What they found out is the, the weeks that they said those affirmations at night, they woke up with energy. The one, when they didn't say those affirmations at night, for their morning, they actually woke up tired, feeling fatigued, not wanting to get up. So what you end your nighttime with is how you're going to spend your morning. So if you are like me sometimes, and um, I've been like really disciplined not to do this anymore, but if you're like on TikTok <laughs> and, and you're like, <laughs> and then you're like, oh my gosh, it's two o'clock in the morning. <gasps> and then you start saying things like, I'm going to be so tired in the morning because I'm only going to get four hours of sleep. Guess what? Your body is going to be tired the next morning. So I have actually done this with myself, like not intentionally, like, let me see how late I can stay up and set an affirmation, see if I wake up with energy. No, it was just like, we had stuff going on. And then next thing I know, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's midnight. And I stopped myself. I'm like, okay, no. I'm going to get some good rest tonight. I'm going to wake up feeling energized. My body's going to be ready to go. And I always, every single time, wake up the same way I went to bed. If I am speaking that affirmation before I go to bed, I'm waking up with that energy. So I have a challenge for everybody on here and anybody who's going to watch this in the future, do this for a week. And then I want you to email me or send me a message on Facebook. My Facebook is Juanita Espinosa in him coaching and tell me your results, like set an affirmation, a positive affirmation before you go to bed every night for seven days. Even if you are not going to do anything on a Saturday or Sunday morning, set that affirmation before you go to bed on Friday and Saturday night, because I want you to see what seven days of this does. Okay, so the second piece that I want to talk about is scripting and journaling. And this is like probably one of my favorite topics to talk about, one of my favorite things to do. And there's so many different areas and different ways you could do it. So one of the things is you could do a gratitude journal. And what it does is it really sets the tone for your day or for your life. Like just writing a gratitude journal every day, like you have so much to be grateful for. We have so much to be grateful for. And there's so many different ways you could be grateful. I've really, the last probably two to three months, probably about three months, really been in super intentional about doing my gratitude journal. So I actually do my gratitude journal at night and I just write about my day. I write about like all the good things that happen. And then I usually write about someone or something that I'm appreciative for. And I will tell you, like, I am finding that even when situations arise, I'm just like, it's okay. It's going to be good. Um, I will tell you in the last three months, um, my marriage with my husband, like I have never been more in love with my husband than I am now. He still does stupid stuff all the time. He still makes me mad like every day, you guys, <laughs> but I am just so appreciative of everything he does for me now. And he is like, so caring. Like he's always probably been like this, but I really just didn't see it. It's like started writing more gratitude for him and then expressing it to him. And same thing with my children. Like I'm constantly telling them how grateful I am for them, how much I appreciate them. And I'm writing specific things. Like I'm so grateful, like that they never had to struggle in this area, God. And I'm so grateful that they have a heart for people that are hurting and they share that love with their friends. And then they keep showing me more and more things. And I'm so grateful that even though we only have one vehicle, like at least we don't have to walk, like we get, we have a vehicle that's warm 
and we get to drive in. Um, I'm so grateful that we have a voice that we could speak our truth with. I'm so, so there's so many different things you could be grateful for. And some of it we take advantage of, or we, we don't, or we take it for granted. And we don't realize like all these little things that we're really we, we really have, and we don't even recognize it. And so I'm a big fan of gratitude journals. I love gratitude. Um, it actually helped my daughter heal from stage four cancer. So that's another reason why I am like gratitude, 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 live a life of gratitude. And anybody who's met her and Brie can attest this, JL is like the most loving person I know. Like it does not matter what people do. She's going to love them and love them and love them. And she's like, she doesn't understand like introverts. She's like, why don't people want to be around people? Like, I just want to love all the people <laughs> and she's 12. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, this, a 12 year old could get it. We need to get it. So, um, gratitude journals are huge in our home. Um, and they really do set the tone for your life. Um, visualization and dream journals. I love writing down my dreams and I kind of combine my journals together. They're not separate. Um, my, your visualization and your dream journals, like you could write in them. Like this is part of that journaling and scripting time. You could still write what you visualize for your life because when you write it down, it's more likely going to manifest in your life. And then prayer journals. And so I usually do my prayer journals with my gratitude journals in um, the evening time. And so I'll just write out my prayers. Like if there's somebody or something that's really on my heart, I'm like writing it out. I'm praying for that thing, or I'm praying for that person, or I'm praying for that situation. And every single time I do that and I pray as usually a couple of days later, I get a text message or they, uh, the, something happens and that I see that prayer being answered. And it's because I'm taking that intentional time to write it down in my prayer journal. So um, Hal Elrod, the one that wrote the book, said through journaling is when he actually got his ideas and other blueprints for his business. It's what led him to make over seven figures a year now. And when I was studying um, over the summer, probably um, about May is when it started. I started studying like the lifestyle of, of, of millionaires and I started studying habits of millionaires. What were they doing that's so different than everyone else? Like what sets them apart? The number one thing that they were doing is they had a morning routine a disciplined morning routine. About 90% of them had a disciplined morning routine. So that really says a lot about it. So when I started doing this and I was like, okay, I wasn't doing it with the intention. Like, I hope I'm going to get more money. I hope we're, you know, we're going to have be making this much money a month. It was just like, okay, I want to do this because I want our lives to be better. I want us to be more productive in our lives. I want our health to feel better. And I want us to be more intentional about our days. So when I did it back in March, I was very dedicated to it. And here's what happened over three months. My sales for my business doubled and tripled every month, every month. And now it has pretty much stabilized at this, at the sale level that it's at. I hit two goals a month before I expected to hit them. And you guys, when I'm talking sales, like I literally started with a, with a company at the end of April, May, I had over 3000 in sales in June, I had over 10,000 of sales and I've had a thousand dollar increase in sales every month since then. I do not even promote this business anymore. Like I just naturally have these people constantly reaching out to me from when I promoted it back in March and April. And this is that this is because I sat down and I got direction and I wrote in my prayer journal and I did the scripting and I did the silence. This was the direction that I got. And so it's kind of set up kind of like a little savings fund for, for my family. And I just know, like, I have customers that order every month. I have business builders that order every month. We actually signed on one of the largest frequency medicine clinics in the country into our business. Like, about a week or two after we started with it. And it was all because I was being intentional and writing this down. Um, Hell Elrod's had so many people, his income doubled 
within two months, he was doing coaching and life and, and uh, business coaching for people. And it, when he started teaching the miracle morning, the saver system, he said his business doubled. Another guy, um, I cannot think of his name, but he has a book called the common path to uncommon success um, that we're kind of working through right now. His business also doubled and tripled from having this morning routine and saying this morning routine up. So not all of them refer to it as the miracle morning or the savers method, but there is definitely something to it by setting your intention for the day. So I have this quote, and this is one of the reasons why I'm so big about reading and so, why I love the miracle morning so much, but it says your level of success is determined by your level of personal development. So if you're not having success in an area, you want to start asking yourself, am I growing in that area? So for me with my children or my husband or my home early in our marriage, I remember like not really knowing how to function <laughs> with a husband <laughs> and with children. We already had, I already had two children at the time. I was a single mom. So I kind of did my own thing. And now I had to mesh with someone else and adjust to his lifestyles and his way of living. And it was, it was somewhat difficult. So what I did is I started getting books. I started watching, um, uh, at the time, you know, we just had YouTube and then I, but I would start getting books on marriage. I would get books on how to take care of your home. We decided I was going to be a stay at home mom and wife with his career. And so through all of that is how I learned, like that is how I learned. Now, when, if I'm really growing in my business and I'm like, okay, I need to learn how to do this, this, and this, like I need to put systems in place or I need to manage my time better. I will go and listen or read a book on time management, because that is going to grow me and that's going to teach me what I need to do. So if you are not already doing personal development every day, I encourage you guys get a book and just start reading it. So how is this related to self-care? Well, first of all, self-care is very biblical. Um, this, uh, this is a quote uh, from the scripture, Mark 12, 31. It says, um, he's talking about the commandments and they're asking him like, what do they need to do? Like, what, you know, do we do all these laws anymore and things like that? And so he says, the se this is actually Jesus. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. And we forget that we cannot love and take care of other people if we don't take care of ourselves. If we're not taken care of, we are literally giving them like crumbs of what is left over from us. And so we have to make sure that we take care of ourselves before we take care of us because they're not, we're not supposed to give them our whole cup. We're supposed to give them that overflow from our cup. Like it's supposed to be the excess of the cup. I think of like a, a coffee cup, like when they're putting that like cream on it and it's all frothy and then sometimes it flows over, like that's the goodness that flows over. <laughs> like that's that, that frothiness is that goodness and that is what we're supposed to be giving out to people whether it is our team members whether it's our business members whether it's our colleagues our clients our our marriage our children our family our friends like they're supposed to get that overflow because we're not supposed to give them our whole cup so your miracle or your morning routine is literally like a foundation. So when you start to take care of yourself and start your day with intention and purpose, you can then take care of others. So I want you to close your eyes and think how your life would be if you had full um, life, full of energy, vitality, focused, and had a full cup. How much more could you do for your family, your church, husband, or wife, friends, or business? What would that really look like if you had extra energy and extra focus, how much more could you do for them? I really want you guys to think about that. Okay, so now the question is, are you ready to transform your life and master your morning? So right now, you guys, I do have a wait list for my seven day mini course. And you're also going to get a bonus of a biblical manifestation 101. And this is the link. And I have two bonuses for you guys. So when you guys enroll, this course is actually not going to be available till December 1st. You're going to get 20 affirmations, 10 for morning and 10 for bedtime. And then you're also going to get the biblical manifestation 101. That's a bonus I'm only doing for people that pre-order. And 
I am doing the class for $7 until December because it's a self-paced class. So you're going to get everything in it. It's an $89 value. After the new year, it will go up, but you'll have the course forever once you pay that $7. So I just want to thank you guys so much for allowing me. If you guys have any questions, I'm actually going to turn it over to Jennifer. Oh my gosh, Bonita, that was amazing. Let me tell you, I'm sitting here, like we, we've had like lots of great self-care speakers and every week has been great, but it seems that it gets better and better and better. Uh, not to take away anything from anybody else, but I will tell you this topic was like near and dear to my heart because I was like, she is going through my morning routine. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love everything that you shared um, because, you know, as, as I begin to work on myself and develop, you know, in areas that I'm like, yeah, I'm struggling in um, those things like journaling and affirmations, that is key for me. I do that regularly. Um, gratitude journals, all of that. That is my um, that is what I do regularly. And so I want to thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm super excited about your course that you just offered, because I believe that's going to be amazing. It's going to help yeah. a lot of people that feel stuck right now. So yeah. Bree, do you have anything? Yes. Oh my gosh. So I got so excited as we we're going through it. Not like I haven't done this before. I need to start doing it again. I would just throw that out there. So whenever Juanita was, um, whenever she pulled out her book, I was like, I forgot I have the journal. Yeah. <laughs> and I pulled it off my shelf. I was like, oh yeah, like I need to do, I need to do it. And um, I, I've gone through Juanita's masterclass um, and she teaches America morning, which is why I get, I'm like, she would be so good on teaching you how to master your morning because I know it's something that she implements um, into her own life. Um, so one thing that's funny that you said is how you do anything is how you do everything because that was my screensaver like, for half of the year last year. It's like I think we both were. We both like <laughs> when we read that book, we were both like, oh my gosh. Like, that was probably it. Out. I was like, oh my gosh, that was my screen ever for forever. Um, but one thing that I like um that you said is that you don't pick your phone up for the first part of the day. I'm like, oh my gosh, girl, that is good. And how you already have like whatever you're gonna listen to already ready so that you don't have to fumble with like accidentally hitting Facebook or accidentally like accidentally opening like a text message or whatever. You're like, no, whenever I open my phone, like this is what it's gonna, you know, this is what it's gonna be. Um, let me see. Your level of success is determined by your level of personal development. Like, I believe that's absolutely true. So even um, as you navigate your morning, it's like, how is my morning routine? It sucks. Okay, I need to read. I need to read the Miracle Morning again because my morning routine, it sucks. <laughs> Especially since I am able to sleep in a little bit later when I'm used to getting up at five o'clock. I mean, you know, when I first started reading this book, I was going to the gym at five o'clock in the morning and y'all were looking at me crazy. You're like, Brie, I can't go that early. I'm like, come on, go to the gym at five, you know, and I'm, I'm up getting ready, going to the gym and like, that's how we get my day started. But ever since I've been working from home, I'm just like, oh, I'll get up at seven. And I'm like, crap, you know, maybe I should start yeah. six in it, not five. I'm not going to do five. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it is. Even when you're a stay-at-home mom and wife, even if you have a business, like we're like, oh, we'll, we'll work until two or three o'clock in the morning. Like we will. But, mm -hmm. and then we're like, yeah, we'll just sleep in. And then it's like, oh my gosh, but you could get so much done if you wake up between five and six every morning. You can, you're right. There's something and about that time you, frame. Yeah, I will tell you that was one of my struggles because I worked retail, so I worked crazy, ridiculous hours. So it was never a set schedule. So whenever I had time to sleep in, I was like, I'm going for it. I don't care who talks about me. If I sleep in the 12, <laughs> hey, I worked 20 hours yesterday. So I'm sleeping in the 12. But once I like, you know, transition over into entrepreneurship, I, I was thinking, you know, I used to do the 5 a.m. workouts, then take my son to school, 
but because I wasn't really sleeping, my pattern was off. I was like, oh, well, I'll wake up and then I'll get my day started thinking I'll be energized. But you know, the longer you stay in that bed, the longer you don't do nothing. So I really had to discipline myself to a place where I was like, okay, nope. And when I get up and get up before my son gets up and then I'm going to be up and stay up. And it was a struggle at first, but as, but also I had to realize that even the foods that I was taking in, like, you know, the, the, my morning routine, my morning breakfast, those things make you sluggish, um, the food Mm -hmm. that you're eating. And so I had to discipline myself in many areas so that I can, you know, make my morning great. And now I absolutely love it. I get up, I'm excited about my day. Now, one of the things that I do do, um, Juanita, um, I don't do the, I do do the journaling at night, but I, um, I listen to YouTube videos that has, that plays affirmations. But I say with that, I say with that, you have to be really careful because if you don't have it on repeat or if you don't pay for the subscription, you may get those crazy commercials and what people don't realize is all that stuff is getting into your subconscious. Yeah. So you don't know what commercials are playing. It could be very disturbing or whatever. So I just make sure I keep it on repeat and I'll play a video. Maybe that's like maybe 10 or 15 minutes long and I'll fall asleep to it. But I find that that helps as well. It just, it just energizes you, you know? So um, let me tell you what you shared today. It was, it was definitely needed. And I know a lot of people need to hear it because as this shift is happening with so many people um, having their own businesses and, you know, life is not normal anymore. We all know that. (laughs) I don't know what we're in right now, but life is not normal anymore. So you have to really personalize your day and make sure that you are setting yourself up for success. And what you share today is like the Bible of it. I have to get that book. Like I have a lot of books and I tell you, if I get a book and I like it, I buy multiple copies so I can share it with people. That's me. (laughs) I will be adding that book to my um, library. So thank you so much. It's a good book. It's an easy read. You know how it's it's not hard. Not at all. But it's not, it's not complex. It's, uh, it's, it was really like his story is so amazing. He almost died twice. And oh, wow. his friend was like, told him just get up and just go for a run because mm-hmm. he was so depressed because of his life. And yeah, yeah. he was like, okay. And so he got up and went for a run, came home and he was like, oh, I feel a little bit better, I guess. And she's like, now do it again the next day and do it again the next day. And he said, after like a week or two, like he was like starting to go back to the gym. He was like starting to be more productive. He wasn't depressed anymore. So he, I mean, it was really just somebody that had this experience and put it together. So he's, it's, it's an easy read. It's not super complex. It's not super scientific. He's like, this is what I did. And this is what a bunch of people did. And then we all started getting better. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) That is, that is so awesome. So, um, One of the things that really touched my heart, uh, Juanita, is when you shared that your daughter started speaking, um, like just being gratitude every day, speaking gratification and and what she was going through and to hear the outcome. It's just amazing. The fact that you're just grateful, you're just grateful for even life, although you may have for some people terminal illnesses, but when you're speaking gratitude, And you're just thanking God for even the smallest of things. It makes a difference. And I'll tell you, that just blessed me when you shared that about your daughter, because a lot of people, they don't realize. And and one of the things that I wanted to, um, I also wanted to look into, because when when women get cancer, I hear all the time how they have to have a great support system and um, just be positive about it. And... I see that there's a huge difference from the women that's like out there cheerleading and enjoying life, even in the midst of, and just living their best life compared to the ones that's like, woe is me. I can't believe this happened to me. It's like the lifespan is a little bit longer, a lot longer. Yeah. And, cures and she never once said that. Like, she, I remember when she went through that and not one time did she ever ask, why me? The closest thing it's 
ever got to it was I remember she because she had high fevers and so as soon as the Tylenol would wear off that they were giving her and I forgot um what else they were giving her to to keep the fever down um before they diagnosed her was um she would start shaking and she'd get really cold and the fever would just spike up to like 105 like in 60 seconds it was crazy and I remember her saying just looking at me saying mama what's wrong with me and I said I don't know but that's the closest thing even to this day she doesn't say I don't understand she's never asked like understand why me or how come I had to go through that she's just like um it is what it is I had to go through it and <laughs> we're all happy and good and yes. she is like I'm one of the happiest kids yeah. and um we didn't change a whole lot in our life like we didn't um I stayed home my husband took her um but every day we did gratitude like even to this day like every night before we go to bed my kids tell me three things they're grateful for um we say prayers every night and then every morning they tell me things that they're grateful for again and so we're really really big on gratitude and you could see which one of my kids like do it more because they are just happier overall like they tend to let things go easier they're just like okay well it is that's what happened okay well we're just going to go on or um you know or whatever like if I tell them I'm like you know that's not in the budget my even my teenage kids they're like okay that's cool mom like I mean that's it's just so peaceful that's awesome that is so awesome I I appreciate that So Juanita, can you tell those who are listening um, again, how can they follow you and your special that you're offering, your course that you're offering? Yeah. So you can find me on Facebook. It's called Juanita Espinosa In Him Coaching. And so, and then I also have a group, it's called Women of Purpose, but it's a little confusing for the group because it's like the little star and then Women of Purpose. So, but if you do, um, facebook.com backslash groups backslash women of purpose you'll find it um that's the domain for it um so that is how you can find me you can follow me on facebook on my personal account um but that's my group and then my facebook page the um the class the so the mini course is a it's technically in eight days, but it's seven days of learning basically the miracle morning. So you get seven days of emails where it's about 10 to 15 minutes each day, where you learn how to implement each step of it day by day. So on day two, you'll learn like um, how to sit in silence and how to meditate. Day three, you learn affirmations. So it's a little bit more in depth in how to craft your own affirmations. What are affirmations? What aren't affirmations? affirmations, um, how to incorporate scripture into your affirmations if you wanted to, um, and then how to visualize. So basically what I did with the affirmations and the scripting today, it's seven days of that with the other steps. And then um, the bonus that I have is um, biblical manifestation 101. So there's four steps that I have that to activate biblical manifestation in your life. And so that's actually part of, that's a bonus day eight. So technically eight eight days, but that eighth day is a bonus. And it is, um, I'm doing the course for $7 right now until, uh, the end of the year, after the end of the year, the price will go up. Nice. That is awesome. I love that. Well, yeah, I'll January definitely we'll be, be doing a, we'll be doing a group challenge mm-hmm. together. So for anybody who's bought the course could do the challenge for free with us in January. And then that will be my last free challenge that I ever offer again. Um, because I've done this challenge a couple times over the last year with some girls. Awesome. That's amazing. So Bree, do you have anything? Um, I don't, I don't have anything, okay. any, any other things, unless you want to go into the updates. Yes, I will. Okay. So I just want to thank everybody again for joining us. We had an amazing topic today on mastering your morning for um, massive success success with Juanita. And she has an amazing course that she's going to be offering that you can connect with her and get. I tell you that it is extremely important that we master our mornings because God has so much greatness in store for us. And when we allow all the craziness and the confusion to get in, We don't walk in our purpose as we should. So the smallest of things is even mastering your morning or listening, the things that you listen to, it makes a difference in your day. 
So get with Juanita. Um, if you are just tuning in, please go back and watch this live because it will bless you. Um, it will bless you. It will bless you. I promise you it will. And I will say, just share it with people because it is something that needs to be shared. Now, as we, um, we are getting close to the end of our year, y'all, we are, whew, we are about to enter into 2022. Can y'all believe it? Oh my gosh. Like it seemed like the year just started, but at the same time, it kind of seemed like the year dragged along a little bit. But I'm like, wait, we still in this month? Wait. And then before you know it, two or three months has gone by. But we are getting geared up for some amazing things with PWIN. And I just wanted to share with you, if you have not been following our page, um, some things that we have coming up. So on November the 2nd at 6.30 um, Arizona time, which is, I believe it's going to be two hours behind us, at 6.30 p.m., join our visionary and founder, Ms. Sharice Irby, as she is talking about creating residual income and uh, wealth and lifestyle. You can register for that on the MyPWIN site. But Ms. Sharice, she's a serial entrepreneur and a next level success coach. And when I tell you, whenever she hosts anything, she's gonna be bringing the fire for you. She's gonna be bringing knowledge and things that you are going to be able to take and leverage with your life and your business and just really grow. So I encourage you to join her on November the, November the 2nd um, at 6.30 Mountain Standard Time. Our next thing is going to be on November the 3rd. Now, if you're wanting to become Become a certified life coach, he wins got you. Listen, we are out here helping women develop their voice and their coaching style and skills to help one, build a kingdom, but two, just help those who are needing help. And as we get ready to go into 2022, we know that you know a lot of people are going to be making resolutions, but why not? And, and I know we always give a lot of great advice. Why not? be a life coach to someone? Why not have that certification and that skill to be able to go out and help more women versus just the one that you're talking to for coffee? But being able to really um, help more people in your community. P1 offers a life coach coaching course. You can complete it within three months and we will have an informational session on November the 3rd at 6 p.m. from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Then our next thing, we have lots of things going on y'all. <laughs> our next thing is going to be the speakers and uh, moderators, the Momentum Virtual Forum. We're gonna be focusing on focus, execute and dominate. And I'm telling you, we have some amazing powerhouse women that is going to be taking the stage here. And I, and, and I know I, I'm going to say Tulsa first, but here we have our very own Miss Katria Bell, Pastor Katria Bell. You here in Tulsa, you already know the fire that she brings. She's going to be one of our powerhouse speakers. Um, we have Miss Monique Davis. She is going to be speaking for us. Uh, she's from Boss Moves and Building um, Sustainable Success. And then we're going to have Miss Tiffany Easley, the Boss Strategist. So I tell you, if you have not registered for that event, please get registered. We want to be able to carry you over into 2022. We don't want the momentum to die, even though we're in the fourth quarter. Don't let that momentum die. Because what is that saying y'all have? How you do anything is how you do, do everything. everything. Listen, that is going to be important for you to carry that into 2022 because it is a key that we are doing everything. We are using all of our gifts, really, using all of our gifts and our talents to help um, others. So that's going to be on November the 6th. You do have to register for it. If you are a PWIN partner, it is free for you. You still have to register. And if you are non-partner, it will be $10. That will be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So that is going to be 10 a.m. Um, for Arizona time, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, and 1 p.m. Eastern Time. So get registered. That is November the 6th, um, and it is $10 for non-partners. 
And then the last thing, if you have not signed up for our blog, please follow us on PWIN um, at P, mypwin.org to receive the blogs every Tuesday. Um, our amazing writer, Miss uh, Victoria Udebiwa, she is such an amazing writer and she posts blogs every other Tuesday that just really just touches your heart and just kind of gets you going for the week. So if you have not signed up for that, please make sure that you sign up to receive the blogs every um, other Tuesday. Yay. I believe that is going to be it for all of our church announcements with Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, I wanna say thank you again, um, Ms. Bonita for your amazing segment today. Um, I'm so grateful that you said yes to coming in and um, sharing with the women of PWIN. For those who are watching, thank you for taking the time out of your day to um, just take care of yourself. As we have been saying that all year, we are gonna check in with you to make sure that you are taking care of yourself in every area of your lives. And for the ones that are not here today, Ms. Natasha and Ms. Cherise, we miss you ladies um, and we love you guys. This is going to conclude our self-care Saturday. Uh, if you ladies have any questions um, or need anything, please reach out to us. Um, we are available at mypwin.org or you can email us at info at mypwin.org. You all have an amazing Saturday and we'll see you later. Bye guys.